Hey guys, I'm Bob from World 5 List, and from your pet goldfish to a giant snake, here are eight pets that you should never release into the wild. Number eight, a starling. Now the story that I'm about to tell you is 100% true, and a big reason why you need to be careful when you bring home non-native animals. In 1890, a fan of William Shakespeare by the name of Eugene Shefflin had a desire. He wanted to bring home some of the birds that were mentioned in Shakespeare's works. The problem here is that the birds in question were a starling, native to Europe, Asia, and Africa, but Eugene, however, lived in New York. Not seeing the issue, he then bought 100 starlings and released them in New York. You want to guess what happened from there? The starlings began to multiply, and by the time that 1920 rolled around, there were starlings from New York to the Mississippi River, and by 1940, they had made it to California. Talk about frequent flyers. By the time they did get to California, their flocks were so huge that they could even total about one million per flock. That's a lot of birds. You know, Alfred Hitchcock would be very proud. However, for the people who aren't proud, they suffer because of the starlings. These birds cause a lot of damage, which costs a lot of money to fix, and they've even crashed planes by colliding with them. Now, if that isn't bad enough, they're so numerous nowadays that they can cause many other birds to become endangered. And remember, this began with only 100 starling in New York. Number seven, ferrets. Now, when it comes to ferrets, it's easy to think, oh, well, ferrets are actually wild animals, so it's fine if I put them back into the wild, right? The problem, though, is that the reverse is true. While there are wild ferret species, there's not as many as you may think, and furthermore, many of them have been domesticated for a millennia. Nine times out of ten, if you go to a pet store and purchase a ferret, you're getting a domesticated one and not a wild one. Therefore, if you do get the urge to set it loose, you're actually dooming it to a short life. After all, you've been taking care of it for some time now, and it's going to be expecting food from someone other than itself. As such, if you release your pet ferret, it'll be gone within a few days because of starvation. Or worse, because it's not expecting any kind of danger from any predators, so it won't think to be aware of its surroundings. The responsible thing to do? Well, that's to contact an animal shelter and see if they have room to take care of your ferret while they try to find it a new home. It's better to extend its life than to cut it short. Number 6. The Argentine Tigu But first, if you're not subscribed here, please do so and turn on that notification bell because I'd love to bring you more awesome videos like this one in the future. Now, remember what I said about releasing non-native birds into a new area? Well, it kind of also applies to just about every other species of animal in the world. Sadly, though, someone made a huge mistake in Florida, and now there's a new animal outbreak there. And its source is the Argentine tegu. This is a very unique lizard that was very much not native to Florida and the United States, but because of an exotic pet dealer, they were released into the Sunshine State, and as such, began to breed, and things went south from there. See what I did there? You see, the tegus lay about 34 eggs in a year, which is quite a lot. And when you multiply that across a bunch of them, their population gets really massive really fast. Florida is already home to so many species that honestly shouldn't be there in the first place that you could probably say it's the home of exotic pet releases, which is how pythons and wild hogs became so synonymous with the state. That's not a good thing. The worst part, though, is that the Tigo is a recent addition to the population, so it's actually not clear how much it'll affect the animals who are native to Florida, but it's only a matter of time before we find out. Number 5. The Goldfish Now here's a creature that I bet you probably wouldn't have thought you'd see on a list, your average, ordinary, everyday goldfish. After all, what could be so bad and harmful about a goldfish, right? 
Well, as it turns out, if you release one goldfish, then likely not a whole lot. But if you release an aquarium's worth, that becomes a problem. Allow me to tell you a story of what happened in Boulder, Colorado. A couple decided to release their goldfish into a nearby lake. There were only a handful of them, but that was actually enough. Soon after their release, they began to multiply, and eventually the lake became full of goldfish. So how did it happen? Well, certain species of fish don't have a lot of natural predators, and goldfish are one of them, as they're descendants of carp from Japan. Since no other fish are attacking them or even eating their eggs, they're free to populate and grow at will. What's more, because it isn't natural, the government's called in to try and fix the problem, and removing thousands upon thousands of goldfish from a lake takes a whole lot of time and money. Finally, goldfish are actually capable of carrying diseases, and as such, putting them into a lake can cause a lot more harm than you think. Number 4. Rats or Mice Another species of animal that gets confused by owners because of their wild roots. Yeah, there are plenty of wild rats and mice in the world, there's no way to deny that. However, not unlike ferrets, the mice that you get at pet stores or other institutions are bred to be pets, or in certain cases, test subjects. So as such, if you decide to release a pet rat or mouse into the world, you're basically setting it up for murder pretty quickly. Just think about it, mice are small and when they're part of your life, they're guided to where they need to eat and drink and exercise and all that fun stuff. But when you release them into the wild, all those guides are gone. Plus, a lot of domesticated mice species are white in fur, which isn't very native to most wildlife ecosystems. Thus, they're going to stand out and likely be caught by predators very quick if they don't die from starvation first. As if that wasn't enough, some species of mice that are bred for home life have certain deficiencies that will cause them to fall even faster. Albino mice, for example, actually have really terrible eyesight, which is not something you want when you're out in the wild world. Number 3. Rabbits Oh boy, rabbits. Should I even have to talk about it? We all should know the dangers of the rabbit population, right? Well, not exactly. You might think that if you release your pet rabbit, or, or maybe even two of them, that they'll go hopping into the fields and start a massive 100 rabbit family, right? Well, wrong. Like most domesticated animals, pet rabbits being released into the wild at large is actually a death sentence. First, because of the way that they're raised and trained, they don't really know how to get their own food. Yeah, rabbits eat seeds, but because of how they're raised at your house, that's not all it eats. So if you take that away, what's it supposed to do? Continuing with that notion, if it doesn't know what to do, it's going to become easy prey for predators. And never forget that rabbits have a lot of predators that like to eat them, like dogs and foxes and cats and hawks and raccoons and birds and more. They'll just stay out in the open area waiting for guidance and then be snatched up by one or even multiple things never to be seen again. I know it's a morbid thought, but it's true, and you'll want to give the rabbit away to another owner rather than putting it where it honestly doesn't belong. Number 2. Turtles Turtles are a bit of an odd pet, but one that can bring a lot of joy to many. They're actually really easy to take care of. But when you're done with raising them, should you dump them into the wild? No. And not just because of the fact that they're going to die soon from never having to get their own food. No, it actually has a greater danger that it can pose to other species of turtles. You see, turtles actually carry disease. It won't harm humans per se. However, if released into the wild, it can spread its disease and infect other species of turtles, causing them to die out in a big way. You didn't really expect that from such a slow creature, now did you? And number one, snakes. Snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? If you get that reference, let me know. I'll mail you a cookie. 
So remember a few entries back when I noted that pythons were introduced into Florida and that it was a problem? Yeah, it's a whole lot worse than you think, because while getting something like a corn snake and releasing it isn't so bad, the bigger and more exotic snake you have, the more danger you're posing to the natural ecosystem. In Florida, not only do they have pythons and boa constrictors exploding in population because of exotic animal releases, but the state actually has allowed the hunting of the snakes because of how much the numbers are and it's really getting out of hand. More than that though, because of the arrival of these snakes, several animal species have suffered greatly. Foxes and rabbits are basically non-existent in certain parts of the state because of the snakes, and in the Everglades, raccoons, possums, and bobcats have seen their numbers drop by about 99%. So yeah, please realize and know what you're doing before you drop off your snake. Thanks for watching. Have you ever released any of these pets into the wild? And if you have, shame on you. Be sure you're subscribed, and I'll see you next time on World 5.